Florence. When it comes to Renaissance art, there's probably no better city in the world to soak it all in. Our time here was spent viewing works by Italian masters both in museums and public spaces, marveling at the architecture, in particular Florence Cathedral and its massive dome, going in search of the best lookout points, and in true Italian spirit, eating plenty of pizza and gelato. In this video, we're going to share with you some of the best things to do in Florence on your visit, so let's get started. So I'm quickly going to tell you the plan for today. Basically, we left our apartment at 7.45 in the morning, which is pretty early, especially for me. But that's because we wanted to be here at the Duomo by 8 in the morning to get in line so that we can visit both the bell tower and the dome on top of the church. We saw the lines yesterday and they were wrapping around the whole building. It was crazy how many people were here. So we've come early before they even open the doors. Sam and his family are already standing in line and the ticketing booth should open in like 15 more minutes. So yeah, that is the plan. We're gonna get some amazing views of Florence today. Speaking of tickets, we paid 15 euros per person for a ticket that gave us access to five attractions associated with Florence Cathedral. These included the bell tower, the baptistry, the museum of works of the cathedral, the crypt, and the dome itself, which also requires making a reservation for a specified time slot. But right now, let's begin with the bell tower. So we are climbing. So far, so good. I would say the staircase isn't quite as narrow as some other bell towers we've climbed. So yeah. But oh man. It is steep though. Oh man, it is steep. And we're the very first people in this morning. Woo. Also known as Giotto's Campanile, the bell tower stands 84.7 meters tall and it's 414 steps to the top. The good thing is that there are a few floors in between, meaning you can take a break along the way and enjoy the views as you slowly make your way up. After climbing the bell tower, we made our way over to our next attraction, the Baptistry. Known as both Florence Baptistry and the Baptistry of St. John, this octagonal structure is a sight to behold. The interior is dimly lit, but this only makes your eyes travel up and admire the glowing mosaic ceiling. There are even a few benches inside the baptistry if you feel like sitting down and soaking it all in. From there we continued to Museo del Opero del Duomo, which is a museum dedicated to conserving artworks relating to Florence Cathedral and the baptistry. One of the main artworks inside the museum are the original Gates of Paradise from the baptistry, which were recently restored. Next, we went inside Florence Cathedral and took the stairs down to the crypt to see the ruins of the former cathedral which once stood here, Santa Reparata. And last but not least, it was time to do the final activity on our pass, climb the Dome of Florence Cathedral, which to this day remains the largest brick dome ever constructed. If you're willing to brave tight passages and narrow staircases, you will be rewarded with panoramic views of Florence as far as the eye can see. And now that we have gone up the dome and come back again, we have stopped at a gelato shop because I feel like we deserve a little treat. Whoa! Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> We ate our gelato at Grome since it was located right around the corner from our apartment and it was seriously some of the best gelato we had in Italy. Okay, we've got our gelato. Let's talk about flavors here. Well, I got the Grand Cone. Yeah. I love this. It's got chocolate around the rim. It's nuts. And I got pistachio and caramel. Looks I've good. I've already had a couple bites. It's so good. Mm. As for me, I went for the mango here. Oh my god. Looking good. Delish. Alright guys, so this morning we are visiting the Uffizi Gallery, which would be the most famous art gallery in all of Florence. And I have to say, the artwork is impressive, but also the ceilings. Check this out. The Uffizi Gallery is considered one of the best museums in the world focusing on the Italian Renaissance. Most of the art collection you see today was gifted to the city of Florence by Anna Maria Luisa, the last Medici heiress before the ruling house of Medici died out. 
Another cool thing about the Uffizi Gallery is that you get some pretty cool views of Ponte Vecchio and the Arno River from a higher vantage point. Okay, so we just finished visiting the Uffizi Gallery and now it's time yeah. for one of the biggest tips for your time in Florence. Well, the biggest tip is every single day you should wake up early and go to one of the major museums mm -hmm. or attractions because if you if you get in line right before it opens, yes. you're going to be the first in, you're going to get your ticket quickly, and you're also going to be able to enjoy the place without yes, all, all the crowds. Yes, without the crowd. This was, this was incredible. Like This was by far the biggest museum that we visited here. Yeah. And we had sections like almost to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I've seen video of what it looks like, like let's say in the peak season in the summer mm -hmm. during the middle of the day. Oh looks, yeah. It looks it looks insane. So for us to be able to have that kind of experience here was quite impressive. Oh yes. and I should mention the price. It was eight euros per person. Mm -hmm. And um, you can book it online in advance and pay yeah. an additional four euros and you get a specified time. And then you skip the line. But to be honest, if you're visiting in the off season like us and you're here first thing in the morning, the line isn't bad at all. Like we yeah. were right near the front. Yeah. And we what arrived like five or ten minutes before it opened. Exactly. So that was awesome. All right, guys, so we are back in the apartment for lunch. We were out sightseeing all morning and we've worked up a bit of an appetite. So we went to this local pizza place that we've been to now. Four times <laughs> yeah, four days. This is, this is, bas this is basically, we, we haven't been cooking as much. Look at that. So yeah, this place is called Pizzeria Toto. They make really good pizzas. And today we got the Napoli yeah. with tomato sauce, mozzarella, anchovies, capers. Did I say oregano already? No. Nope. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty good. And we came to 21 euros and mm -hmm. you can get some even cheaper ones. If you just get mozzarella only, it's 18 yeah. euros. So. so yeah, that's and pretty good for four we, people. We got Nutella. Calzone. Calzone. Calzones. Calzones. So yeah, this is going to be our dessert for now. Let's dig in. Another place we visited in Florence was Piazza della Signoria, an L-shaped square right in the heart of the city. One of the main landmarks in the square is Palazzo Vecchio, or the Town Hall. And just to the right of this building you have Loggia dei Lanzi, an open gallery where you can view many marble and bronze statues, kind of like a taster of what's to come inside Florence's art galleries. So we are currently visiting Piazza della Signoria. What do you think yeah. so far? Well, I think it's pretty impressive. There's a lot of sculptures to visit. It's basically a bit like an outdoor museum. Yes. And we got here early in the morning and it's already starting to get crowded in the square. So yeah. my tip would be to come early for sure. And also if you come here, you can see a copy of the famous statue of David by Michelangelo. Yeah. And the original is housed in a museum, you know, because David would get a little cold out here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to show you the replica and hopefully we'll see the real deal exactly somewhere during our visit exactly <laughs> and speaking of David we did find him over at Galleria dell'Accademia this gallery houses sculptures and paintings from the 1300s to the 1600s but most people are here to see one guy all right so this morning we are inside Galleria Accademia who are we visiting who have we come the to real see real David the real David yeah. over there Michelangelo's David depicts the biblical David carved out of a single block of marble. Originally, this statue was commissioned to adorn the roofline of the cathedral. However, upon its completion, Michelangelo's patrons found the statue so beautiful that they decided to place it where it could be admired up close. We are now inside a gallery where it's all busts and sculptures made out of plaster, all these different studies. So cool. We have found our favorite sculpture so far. Yours. Boy with dog. That's your favorite sculpture. Okay, fine. I'm waiting for boy with cat. Boy with cat. Yes. Let's see. <laughs> we have boy with cat in here. <laughs> We made it to the river, it's not far from our apartment at all. The and we're crossing, Arno River? Yeah, we're going to be passing the Ponte Vecchio Bridge right now. Yes, so. which just means the old bridge. old bridge. But it's pretty cool if you can see it over there. It's yeah. a covered bridge and apparently a lot of the buildings you see there are jewelry shops. And this is a tradition that dates back from the days of the Medici, so yeah. a long time. Though today you see rows of jewelry shops, Ponte Vecchio was once lined with butcher shops who would toss unwanted leftovers into the river. 
It was during the 16th century that one of the Medici ordered for the butcher shops to be replaced with jewelers. And that's a tradition we see to this day. When it comes to catching sunset in Florence, there are no better views than from Piazzale Michelangelo. This square sits on a hill just south of the historic center on the other side of the Arno River. Even though it was looking like a pretty gray day, the sun burst through the clouds and we had a pretty magical sunset. Now let's talk food and take a trip to the Central Market. This indoor market is Foodie Central and we ended up visiting on more than one occasion. The second floor of the market is filled with eateries where you can sample delicious Italian dishes. Here's a little taste of what we got up to. This is called Trapizino and it looks amazing. Basically this is pizza dough in the form of a triangle and then it's been stuffed with a filling. So yeah, I'm just gonna dig right in now. How's it? Good? So tasty. So tasty. Especially with the pesto on top and the cheese. Man, they had some good looking gelato and it was uh -huh. hard to choose, but when I saw the rum and raisins, there were so many raisins coated yeah. over this. I was like, I gotta get rum and raisin. And this one is called Malaga. I'm gonna try it here with a little wafer cookie. You can already see that I'm getting a raisin on here. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh, wow. Wow, that's delicious. Oh, and the <laughs> delayed onset of the rum. Oh my goodness. However, if you're looking for a low-key meal at home, the Central Market is a great place to pick up ingredients to bring back to your kitchen. We bought some fresh ravioli and pesto that we prepared back in the apartment. Check out this hunk of yeah. cheese. This is the first time we've done that. It's the first time we've got a proper block of parmesan. It looks because so before good. Before we've just got it all pre-grated. This so good. is the real deal. And you can even see the name. This is from like a real, you know, oh, yeah. cheese wheel. Oh, yeah. Parmigiano Reggiano. It is time for the plating of the meal. And Ravioli the is followed ready. Followed by the eating. Oh, oh, oh. Two different colors. Two different colors. Pesto sauce. What should we do? Vegetables on top or on the side? Oh, let's put them on the side. On the side. Veggies on. Two different veggies and pestos. meat. Veggies and meat on the side. Yes. Yeah. The the pest is Italian. The the side vegetables. I feel like it's our own creation. <laughs> this is the hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different Italians ingredients. Italians would be offended if they saw this. Probably, but it, I, I gotta say, guys, it tastes good. So that's all we're gonna do. And with. the parmigiano. Reggiano. The best part. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. And that's a wrap for our visit. As always, we hope you enjoyed this travel guide and that it gave you a few ideas of things to do in Florence on your own visit. If you have any other suggestions of things to see, do, or experience, feel free to share those with fellow travelers in the comments below. Wishing you happy travels and we'll see you in the next video as we continue our travels through Italy. Bye.